Hi there, it's Charlotte Fantelli from Branded Studios and today I'm joined by the mega talented director Derek Wayne Johnson who is responsible for the creation of Stallone Frank that is, the new documentary about Frank Stallone's life. So hi Derek, how are you doing? I'm, I'm well, how are you? Thanks for the nice introduction. So Derek, can you tell me what first inspired you to make the documentary with Frank? Well, Frank and I were friends for about a year before the idea came up, and it actually wasn't even my idea. It was uh, our producing partner, Emmett James, who is uh, also from, from England um, originally. He, uh, he came up with the idea, and, and he kind of knew Frank briefly. And um, we were just talking one day about what we're going to do next, because we had just done the John Avildsen documentary, King of the yeah. Underdog. And he goes, what about one on Stallone and I go I mean what is it's all been done on Sylvester he goes no 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 on Frank ah. that's the one so that that's literally how it came up it wasn't my idea but from there you know we we called Frank and we're like you know do you want to do this and he goes yeah so that's how it came about and you say you knew Frank and obviously um you've made you've made documentaries um with the family before but was there anything that surprised you when you were making this documentary? Anything that came up? Anything that you didn't know about Frank that, that sort of surprised you? Yeah. You know, I didn't know that whole early 80s era that he had, be it, uh, you know, uh, being a pop star, having a number one hit. I knew the Rocky era, yeah. singing in his brother's films, and then his later late 80s acting yeah. Uh, career because I'm a big fan of Barfly. So that whole like American bandstand and and far from over being bigger than Michael Jackson briefly. Yeah. That was new new to me. It was it was pretty wild. Fantastic. And it's as as I've said, it's not your first documentary of this nature. What what called you into the genre in the first place? Where is it a passion of yours to bring stories like this to life? Well, it, it was by total accident. Um, I never set out to do documentaries. When I did the, the John Avildsen documentary, that was a way for me to be able to work with my hero. Wow. And because and, I offered him a couple of scripts to direct, he turned me down. So I said, wow. what if I make a documentary about you? So I got in the door making documentaries by accident. And then it just kind of led to other documentaries and other documentaries. And here we are. And now you're an award-winning documentary filmmaker. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's, I mean, it's, it's been a blast. I love feature films and that's what I did before and will yeah. do again. But something about documentaries that just kind of caught on for a little bit and it, we've just had a blast. And I think as, as a fellow filmmaker, I think that really shows in your documentaries is that the cinematography, for me, when I watched it um, for the first time and obviously I was watching it with a very critical eye because I was seeing whether I wanted to sort of, you know, work with you guys. Um, and it just blew me away. I think the cinematography on the film um, just elevates it above the sort of documentaries I, I get across my desk. Um, and I, I think that's probably what, you know, what won the awards, that and the fact that obviously it's an incredibly good story. Um, do, you, do you feel that that is something that you bring because of your passion for uh, drama and storytelling and scripted. Do you think that's something you bring to, to the genre? Well, first of all, thank you. And I'm so glad that we are working with you on this. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think so. I, I have a degree in cinematography, um, but really like what I try to do in my documentaries is I try to make them feel like a movie. Yeah. So I try to give the audience a cinematic experience and not just kind of an ABC documentary. Now, obviously with talking heads and stuff, it is a little ABC in that sense, but the feel and the look and the emotions, I try to make it feel like a feature. And that's something that definitely is directly coming from my real uh, job that I do, which is making movies. Um, but yeah, I think that that has a lot to do with it. And thank you. No, I, I genuinely think that comes across. I really do. I think it feels much more of an experience, you know, watching it than, than talking heads. Um, 
And I think that's something that you do very well. I think bringing in the emotion, certainly for me, one of the things that stands out about the documentary is um, how fascinating, you know, Frank's collection um, of, 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 well, firstly, the things that he's done in his life, but equally his collections of photographs and memorabilia and moments. You know, he really is a, a treasure trove, I think, that you, you manage to pull the top off and, uh, you know, sort of pull a fascinating, fascinating documentary out of. So tell me then, uh, going on from that, where did your journey into filmmaking begin? Oh, wow. Well, I, I've always wanted to be a filmmaker since I was about three years old. Wow. And uh, I started making films in high school. And then I went on to film school, and made my first feature there. Yeah. And uh, I've just been working nonstop ever since. It, it was a lifelong passion and goal that uh, just I'm very fortunate to be able to do and make a living at. Obviously, I haven't had a, a major hit yet, but I hope to at least have one one day. Um, but yeah, it started very, very early on. And you know, you mentioned a second ago though about I want to, I want to hit on Frank's photographs and the archive that he has. Uh, Chris May and I, you know, my producing partner at Cinema Eighty Three, we sat at Frank's house for two days, scanning in all of those photographs. Wow because he has boxes and boxes and file cabinets full and they're all filed. Yeah. And, and it was just amazing that, that he's kind of like his family's historian, if you will. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I find an absolutely fascinating from, you know, the, the photographs that he had. I mean, we're talking 70 years ago, you know, 65, 70 years ago. Um, and, and yet they're documented in, in the documentary beautifully. Um, was there anything, what were the challenges of making this film? Oh, well, uh, well, for one thing, you, you know, I can give you some of the experiences. We yeah. traveled all over the United States to, to get these interviews, which was fun. As far as challenges, um, I would say probably licensing the music was interesting. Okay. Not the theme, the score that was done by our wonderful composer, Greg Sims. But it was interesting. We had never licensed songs before. Okay. And now we're licensing songs uh, that Frank uh, created and the movie is about Frank. So we have to go and get our, our music attorney to help us license Frank's own songs because he didn't own them. Wow. So that was interesting and it, and it was challenging because we had never done it before, but obviously we, we pulled it off. There's so much more to him than meets the eye. I mean, everybody knows, yeah, he did a little doo-wop thing in the first Rocky film and they think, oh, that's cute. You know, Sylvester had his brother sing a little thing at the beginning. And then you dig deeper and you find out, wow, this guy's a tremendous musical artist in his own right. He was into music 24 hours a day and knew that was his calling. He never quit. And would you say, because you were a very small team, I mean, this is, you know, written by Derek, uh, you know, uh, you are a producer and obviously you're the director. So you pulled this together with a very small team. Um, was, was that, uh, did that help the overall experience, the intimacy of working very closely with those people or, or did it have its own challenges? Oh, it definitely helped. We have an amazing team, uh, you included, okay. at Branded. So uh, Chris May, Dave Polamini, uh, Greg Sims, as mentioned a, a minute ago, et cetera, et cetera. There's just a, a handful of us. Yeah. And it, I think it helps because we are a tight-knit team and we don't have to outsource a whole lot of material or jobs. We can just do it ourselves. I think in your interview with Frank, he always likes to talk about how I edited in my uh, bedroom, I edit everywhere. I'm a mobile editor. I'll edit in the bedroom, in my office, in on an airplane. I, I, when I get obsessed with something, I edit it anywhere in the world yeah. because just you kind of get addicted to it. And yeah. uh, and the team certainly certainly helped. I mean, yeah, we're small, yeah. but 
everybody's very passionate about what they do in, on this team. And it's just, I wouldn't change it for anything. I mean, if, if this were too large and too big, I don't think the film would have that special quality that it has. I find that, and I, I found with, with all your films, actually, Derek, I feel it almost feels like you're sat in the same living room with the person that you're depicting. There is an intimacy to it. There is an accessibility to it that I think you bring to the audience where you have access and you go in, which leads the audience in. We come in through you. Um, and do you, do you feel that taking us in that, on that journey with you allows the audience, well, I feel that it allows the audience access that we wouldn't be able to get? Absolutely. Uh, it, Cause you know, that's the thing, you know, Frank is the subject of the documentary. So you're hearing his story uh, told by him in the talking heads, yeah. but, but it's, it's the director's vision yeah. of how he is creating that story and how he's telling that story. So obviously I stand back behind the camera. You don't see me in the documentary or hear me. And that's my vision of his story. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, the, these, all these big celebrities, whether I'm already friends with them or not, when you get in and you're in with them and they really see that you're sincere as the director, as the interviewer, they're going to be a good interviewee and they're going to really break down any walls and really give you the good stuff, so to speak. And one thing about Frank is he's really good at, is he's good at telling stories. Yeah. So he was easy to, to, to edit in post-production. I mean, he could start at birth, go all the way to say like 1975, stop two weeks later we go film again and he could pick up right where he left off to say like 1995 whatever so it was he was easy to do that and everyone is just you know when you're that famous like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone or Billy D. Williams you're the real deal you're probably the nicest guy in the room it's usually the 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 the, the people that haven't made it they're the ones that are more difficult, it seems like. So really never have a problem with the, a with the A-listers. So Derek, you've won many awards for uh, Stallone, Frank that is. Uh, are there any that sort of really stand out to you? Is there, was there anything that you really wanted to go in for and uh, are very proud of? Oh, wow. Uh, you put me on the spot on that one. Um, well, let's see, we won five awards, I believe, Yep. Uh, for Stallone Frank, that is. And each one were, was amazing. I think, um, so I don't want to say that, you know, I'm proud of one over the other, but I feel that each one was just like, wow. I mean, five? I think that says a lot about the film, about the team, the work that was put into it. I mean, you're lucky to even get into a film festival, yeah. much less than five. So shout out to everybody involved for, for doing that. I mean, it was quite, uh, it was a quite a really fantastic festival run. Now, obviously we would want to go larger and be in larger festivals or even the Oscars or whatever, but you know, it's such a tough competition out there. And, 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 um, but yeah, the five that we won, I'm very proud of. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you ever knew, but we actually had a cinema distribution deal um that we managed to pull off before covid happened so uh yeah i think i think doing what you did um and then now bringing it to to market in the way that we have um covid certainly changed plans but it's i'm delighted to say that that people can now access the film so with frank having so many varied things in his life um uh, you know the acting the uh, you know, boxing, as well as obviously the, the music, which is his, his first and foremost love in life. Um, how did you manage uh, as a filmmaker? Did it, how did you start to weave that web through each and every aspect of Frank's life? It must have been quite a challenge. There wasn't just one strand or one story you had to tell. It was, it was a body of work that spans a lot of different areas. 
Well, again, I, I, I'm going to throw some credit back to Frank on his storytelling abilities when he's being interviewed. He's, he's good at weaving it together for you yeah. as opposed to some interviewees that you're like, you're pulling it out of them. He made it very easy for me. My brother managed me for one day with the American tragedy. We went to see a group called the Soultastics. It's like, yeah, that's what you guys should be doing. We're kids, we couldn't even drive yet. So my brother's funny, man. He just walks up and goes, hey, who's your manager? So my brother contacts this guy. We auditioned and played. He goes, yeah, hey, you guys are pretty good, but you gotta get outfits. They're these big horse check pants with orange turtlenecks. But why would you buy a turtleneck sweater to play live with wool plaid pants. Um, now, as far as weaving it together in post-production, because you have to put in the, the photos, the video, the, the other talking heads, it was quite a challenge. And it, and it always is because the thing is, you don't write a script for a documentary, at least I don't. I'll do an outline or a synopsis, but really what I do is I rely on the talking heads to be the script to write it for me with their words. Yeah. And then I find it in post-production. Now, I do prepare topics of discussion for them. I'll have maybe 10 to 20 tailor-made questions yeah. uh, for that interviewee. Yeah. And, Cause I know what I want them to talk about. And then I let them go as well to talk about whatever they want. You get all of that together and then you start finding the key moments. So it's challenging. Cause it's, I always tell everyone, when you do a documentary, it's like you're an investigative journalist, except yeah. you don't have to make the six o'clock news and, and, and edit a package in a few hours. Yeah. It takes years because yeah. you're putting it into an hour and a half film and um, quite challenging. Absolutely. Well, I think you did a sterling job. And uh, really, what is, what is next for, for Derek Wayne Johnson? Where are you headed? What are you doing? Wow. So right after um, uh, Stallone Frank, that is, and, and uh, well, actually, it just it just came out, of course, in January. So but right before that, it was released. I started um, editing a secret project, oh. um, which I can't talk about, but I was hired to edit. And I never take jobs like that. I usually edit my own stuff. Yeah. So but it was a pretty big thing. And uh, I'm excited about it once it does get you know, you, I can talk about it. So I've been working on that for the past five months or so, five or six. And obviously we have other documentaries coming up. I want to do features again. So we're just kind of in this COVID era trying to get another documentary for our production company, Cinema 83 Documentary Films. Yeah. And then the other half of our company is Cinema 83 Entertainment, which yeah. does feature films. Right. So we're, we're trying to put the pieces together to, to move on and, and get to shooting. Thank you for joining us today, Derek. And I just want to let you know at home that you can get Stallone, Frank that is, on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, and it will be out soon on AVOD, including Voodoo, Hulu, Raku, and many more. To keep up to date, go to stallonemovie.com.